grace and peace to you all here on this second Sunday in Lent. My name is Reed Baer, pastor at West Parish of Barnstable United Church of Christ. I'm glad you have found time to join us today. With me is our associate pastor, the Reverend Christy Burns. We are an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ, where we warmly welcome everyone, no matter where you are on life's journey. We're always looking for ways to keep in touch. And if you would like to chat or find a way to meet up, just contact us by calling the church office or sending us an email. We'd love to do it. And now let us worship together, beginning with our call to worship. But first a word. It will sound familiar. It is a call to worship we have often used together. And yet, you'll see. People of God, look around and see the faces of those we know and love. Neighbors and friends, sisters and brothers. A community of kindred hearts. We look around, but all we see is a computer screen and an almost empty meeting house. People of God, look around and see the faces of those we hardly know. Strangers, visitors, forgotten friends, the ones who need an outstretched hand. We look around, and yet, where are they? People of God look around and see. Look around using the lens of memory, and you will see that community of kindred hearts. There's Bobby in the back pew where she always sits. There's Wendy and Van up front near to where Celia used to sit. Our community may be scattered, but they are still here in our hearts. People of God, look around and see. Look using the lens of imagination, and you will see that our community has grown to include folk we have not even met in person. Here on the Cape, up in Jamaica Plain, in England, in Australia, and elsewhere. People of God, using the lenses of memory and imagination, see all the images of God who are with us over the miracle of the internet. God's shining spirit for all to see. So come, let us come before God with awe, thanksgiving, and praise. And let us continue our worship by joining in with John Murrell and Donna Murphy, aloud or just in your head, a hymn which speaks to the steadfast care of our God for us. Great is thy faithfulness.
let us be in the spirit of prayer. Christ, our teacher, you reach into our lives, not through instruction, but story. Open our hearts to be attentive, that seeing we may perceive, and hearing we may understand, and understanding we may act upon your word. Amen. Today we have a special version of the Lord's Prayer sung by John Morrell and accompanied on the piano by Donna Murphy. And so let us continue in the spirit of prayer. Today we have one of Jesus' most familiar parables, the parable of the sower. It's taught in every church school curriculum, and its lessons are seemingly so obvious that we can be led into missing the whole point. Now, a parable is not an easy story with a clear moral, like an Aesop's fable can often be. At its simplest, a parable is a metaphor or simile drawn from nature or common life, arresting the hearer by its vividness or strangeness, and leaving the mind in sufficient doubt 
about its precise application to tease it into active thought. As you listen to the parable of the sower, my prayer for you is that your mind will be teased into active thought. Again, he began to teach beside the sea. Such a very large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat on the sea and sat there while the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. He began to teach them many things in parables. And in his teaching, he said to them, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil, and it sprang up quickly, since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yield, yielded no grain. Other seed fell into good soil and brought forth grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. And he said, Let anyone with ears to hear listen. The problem, as I see it, is one of perspective. As in, it's all about me. When we read or hear the parable of the sower, we assume it's all about us. Let's go back to the start. The sower sows the seed. A bit later in the chapter, we read that Jesus pulls his disciples aside and tells them that the seed represents the word, that is, the gospel. Now, we know that the disciples have been told that Jesus was giving them his mission to make it their own. And Jesus' mission was to share the gospel, the good news, that the kingdom of God has come near. Now, the seed seems to have fallen on different terrain, some good for growth, some not so much. The seed that falls on the path and is immediately eaten by the birds well, that represents people who let Satan or the power of evil snatch the gospel away from them. The seed that falls on the rocky ground, where there is no soil, uh, that represents people who join the party for all the wrong reasons. And when trouble arises, they have no roots to hold them fast. The seed that falls among the thorns represents people who hear the word, but let the lures of wealth and the temptations of the world distract them, choking out the word before it can bear fruit in their lives. And then there are those blessed, blessed folk who are like good soil, like amended loam, richly fertilized soil, where the word can take solid root and produce amazingly. The moral of the story is obvious to any grade schooler. Don't be bad soil, be good soil. Don't be like those folks over there. If you ever got the highlights uh, for Children Magazine back in the day, I always read it at the dentist's office in the, uh, the waiting room, you will recall the comic stories of Goofus and Gallant. It's like that. You never want to be Goofus. Be a good boy and be gallant. Sigh. It's really just exhausting, isn't it? Not just in the way it calls us to divide the world into us versus them, good soil versus bad soil, but in the way it ignores the reality that for many of us, we find ourselves to be different types of soil at various times in our life. For instance, I suspect that I am not the only one who might look back on his teenage years as times when my interests lay elsewhere than in my spiritual life, concentrated as they were on my studies and studying members of the opposite sex. And perhaps I am not the only one who, in the early years of my 
professional career who was all in for the cares of the world and the lure of wealth. Truth to tell, if I have ever really been fertile soil, those times have been far outnumbered by a life spent among the rocks, thorns, and weeds. But remember, if this is a parable, and both Mark and Jesus tell us that it is, is it really to be interpreted in such an obvious manner? Do we really read it as if it is just conventional wisdom restated on the farm? Can Jesus, who tells us he came to proclaim the good news, really want us to come away with this didactic moralizing? But what if we changed perspective and realized that the parable, like most of Jesus' parables, is not about us at all? It's primarily about God. And if God is a character in the parable, who stands in for God? Well, it's the sower, of course. The farmer who was out spreading the seed, that is, the gospel. And if we look at this farmer, this sower of seed, what picture do we come away with? Now, I suspect that most of us, like those disciples, are not agricultural experts. And what we know about farming won't amount to much. But you did not have to go to Texas A&M to figure out that this is one crazy, profligate, almost extravagantly wasteful farmer. Back in the day, seed was precious, seed was expensive, seed was in limited supply. Now, most of us, if called upon to plant a field, would prepare the soil for maximum yield. We would rototill the packed soil so that tiny roots might grow deep and straight. We would carefully spread the seed at spaced intervals, conserving it to be sure we did not run out. But this farmer, the farmer in the parable, sows wildly, and the seed goes everywhere. It lands on the path, it lands amid thorns, it flies into rocky terrain where it is sure to have a hard time making a go of it. And yes, some does find its way into the good soil, where it produces a miraculous abundance. This Jesus tells his disciples, is how God operates and how God is. God sends his word out to the world, to the whole wide world, to everyone, without distinction, without pre-qualification. God does not care about agricultural efficiency or market maximization, does not fear running out of the word. And trust that in time the growth will come. This, Jesus tells his disciples, is how I am as well. Look not at just, just at what I say, but look at what I do. When I called you as my disciples, did I pre-qualify you? Did I require degrees in religious studies? Did I ask for references? For testimonials of your good character? No, I walked along a lake and saw four of you fishing and called you just as you were. I saw one of you working in a tax collecting booth and without knowing a thing about you, called you to follow. And I don't keep my words for you alone. I'll tell anyone who will listen about the good news that the kingdom of God has drawn near and can be experienced experienced here and now, if only you will trust. I don't care if you think you are fertile soil or a rocky patch or a bed of thorns. I accept you just as you are and share the good news with you wherever you find yourself. You might think this is a bit crazy, and maybe it is. But at Bible study a week ago, Sharon Hunt, a retired high school teacher, told us this is the same sort of crazy 
teachers the world over engage in. In the classroom are all sorts of students. And while a teacher might suspect that some, some students will profit more from their teaching than others, in reality, they have no idea. And so they teach to everyone. And occasionally, as Sharon shared with us, years later, a teacher will, teacher will run into a former student, one who might have been considered rocky soil at best, who will thank them for their teaching and explain what an impact it had on their life and on their career. This, Jesus tells his disciples, is how God operates and how God is. This, Jesus tells them, is how I operate, how I am. And this, Jesus tells his disciples and tells us, his church, this is how you are to operate and how you are to be. So often we worry about church growth. We grow frustrated over the poor response to our sowing of the gospel. We can even be angry at ourselves for our own ineffective efforts. Jesus tells us to just chill. The job of the sower is to sow and the rest is up to God. God gives the growth, not the sower. So just as Coach Bill Belichick would say, just do your job and sow and sow and sow. Do your job and leave the rest to me. Trust me, the growth will come. Amen.
Let us be in the spirit of prayer. Ever planting God, ever nourishing creator, on this day as we gather to worship you, as we pause to remember the growth that we have known here these past centuries, as we seek your will for us in the years to come, we thank you for many things. We thank you that you empower us to be your partners in your ongoing work of redemption for this world, that you gift us with the ability to make ever more visible to this world your inbreaking kingdom, a kingdom of love and compassion and justice and peace. We pray that we might be ever more effective agents of your love, that we might love more deeply, care more sincerely, work for peace and justice with more passion, even give more generously. But above all, we give thanks that it is you that give the growth, so that while we may tire from our labors, we will never be discouraged, that while we might sorrow over setbacks, we will never lose hope. In that hope, we pray for all those in need this day, beginning right here with me, with all of us gathered together across the internet. When we are tempted to believe the adage that you can't teach old dogs new tricks, stir us with your resurrection power and remind us that if life can come out of death, then new life can come out of us and a new start and a changed life is possible. When we are tempted to believe that the other will never change, grant us the grace to recognize that you came to us and died and then were raised not just for us but for everyone. And so let us venture forgiveness. We pray today for all those in need of healing, of comfort, of strength, of purpose, of love, of hope, of joy. Grant that the challenges we face in life, as dire as they may be, not to feed us, but instead be as waters on a thriving garden, stimulating us to growth towards you and towards your kingdom. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Friends, we sow seeds of faith and hope and love and true community in so many ways here at West Parish. And the amazing thing is we often get to see them grow. We started the new service some years ago, 4.30 Saturday afternoon, and we saw it grow into a vibrant worship community with a Saturday school and the beginning of a youth group. We started a silent auction at the Rooster Crows Fair some years ago, and it has grown from a small experiment to a mainstay of the fair. When the pandemic hit, we had never made services available over the internet. We had never live streamed them outdoors. We had never pre-recorded them and then uploaded them so that you could watch on your own timetable. But with your support, we made all these possible. And now we reach people around the world from this 1717 meeting house. Friends, it has been your giving of yourselves, of your time, your talent, and yes, your treasure, which has planted these seeds. God gave the growth, yes, but you planted. If you would like to Continue to help us plant those seeds of growth. You can do so by sending in a contribution to West Parish of Barnstable at P.O. Box 219, West Barnstable, Massachusetts, 02668, or by going to the website at westparish.org and clicking on the Donate button at the top of the page. So thank you all, and God bless you, everyone.
Friends, at some point in your life, as a child, a teen, or when you became an adult, a seed of faith was planted in you. And by the grace of God, through sunny days and rainy weather, through boom times and bust, that seed sprouted and grew. And so go forth this day, blessed to be a blessing. Sowing seeds of love. That God's, God's love might abound on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Thank you.